or seven months into the pandemic and I've been meaning to start making sourdough bread literally the whole time, like since March, but I didn't get around to it until a few weeks ago. And I'm having so much fun making bread. I will say it is way more difficult than I realized it would be. It's, you know, it's just a lot of timing and such. Today, we're gonna not make bread. We're gonna make something even better. We are gonna be making some sourdough pizza. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how you make the dough, which is a lot of fun. And we're gonna make two different pizzas. We're gonna do a potato pizza, because I love a good potato pizza. And we're also gonna do like a more traditional one with marinara sauce. This video is sponsored by Daya, makers of delicious vegan cheese that is so perfect for the pizzas that we're making today. Daya recently reformulated their cheese and now they have this new cutting board collection. Four super delicious vegan cheeses. You can really use these vegan cheeses on any of your recipes anytime you need to replace cheese, especially a really nice melty cheese. And what are they made out of? These are made out of chickpea protein. That's one of the ingredients and it makes for just a nice, creamy, perfectly textured vegan cheese. I'm definitely a fan. So they've got the pepper jack, the cheddar, the cheddar and mozzarella blend, and the mozzarella. We are gonna be using the mozzarella today for our pizzas. Before I get started with measuring my starter and my flour and mixing it all together, I'm just gonna measure out my salt. So I'm just gonna zero the scale. I need 10 grams of salt. I will link to all of my tools that I use for making bread and pizza in the description box down below. This scale that I have is really great. It's really sleek and it looks good. This is the only special tool that I have bought since I started this whole project. So I'm gonna add 375 grams of water. Now, we are going to add the starter. I'm using Discard, actually. I need 100 grams of this. I start small, so of course we're trying to get back up to 475. You don't have to be so perfect and exact, but to me that's the fun part. If you don't have a starter, if you haven't actually started making a sourdough starter, then obviously you're gonna need to do that first. By the way, right now I'm just stirring it up, kind of dissolving that starter into the water. Anyways, to make the starter, it's very easy. Basically, you're mixing water and rye flour or whole wheat flour, and you're just letting it wild ferment, get all bubbly and nice on your countertop for a few days, and you have to feed it every day. Every time you feed your sourdough starter, you discard some of it as well, because you don't you don't want to keep building, 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 feeding, 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 and it'll just be like your whole kitchen. So you have to throw away a little bit. And what do you do with what you throw away? You can make pizzas, like what I'm doing right now. You can do crackers, you can do really anything with it. And then the actual ripe starter is what I use to bake the bread. So now that this is nice and combined, you see it's just like a milky consistency. It doesn't have to be perfectly, you know, well blended with no chunks. That's fine. Now I'm going to add my flour and my salt. 500 grams of flour. Okay, y'all, we gotta do an MF. So we're at 476, so we're gonna need to get to five, uh, 976. That's gonna be a lot of flour, okay? So, this will make four pizzas, by the way, if you're like, what's all that flour? So I'm at 960, 976 right there. All right, we're done with you for the moment. I'm gonna use this little wooden spoon to just stir this together making sure that we don't have any dry flour left. I forgot something. I'm glad I'm remembering it now, not later, while well, I still have lots of moisture. But that's that, that salt, 10 grams of salt. Very important. So we want this to have a little bit of that salty flavor, bring out all the other flavors, of course. And like I said, this is a wet dough. It's gonna make for a really nice pizza. Okay. That looks good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer it to a clean bowl. I'm just going to line this a little bit of oil. Just use your hand to grease it because obviously this is going to prevent the dough from sticking too much. We are just going to transfer this dough into the bowl and we're just going to sit for half an hour and then we'll come back to it, all right? I'm just going to cover it with a kitchen towel and put it there and let it do its thing. Okay. 
at this point, it is time to fold our dough for the first time. We're gonna do this four times total. I have wet hands, well, damp hands, so that it doesn't stick too much. I'm literally just going to reach down, grab some of the dough, and fold it over. Turn the bowl, do it again. Turn the bowl, do it again. This is mixing the dough, but it's also helping to form the gluten. Okay, so this is going to sit for another 30 minutes. And then I'll do it again. Now I'm back for the final fold of my dough. So after I finish this fold, I can actually let it sit overnight or for at least six to eight hours before I did it overnight and it was fine. So after it's set like this, we will shape it into little dough balls basically. And those dough balls, they'll need to rest for at least six hours, but they can also rest up to three days, or you can even freeze them. And that is just all you need to bake with. So make these into little dough balls, let them sit at least six hours, and then keep them in the fridge or freeze them until you're ready to use them. to transfer all of this dough to my workspace. I'm gonna flour it, and then I'm going to form it into a ball. Ooh, it smells good. Mm, I love it, okay. So what we wanna do now is also shape these four into balls. I'm just gonna stick these in the refrigerator. Of course, I need to cover them. So just use a clean grocery bag, plastic. Great way to reuse. Ta-da! Hey guys, so we are back. It is 7.30, 7.36, and I'm hungry and ready for dinner. So, let's get back to our pizza. I've taken the doughs out of the refrigerator. They're much more firm. By the way, Baby Jay is right here having her dinner. So you'll probably hear her talking. Can you say hi? Hi. She says hi. So what I'm gonna do is I still have the same flowered workspace from before, I just put it on the side. I'm gonna put them here to come to room temperature so that they will be easier for me to shape and turn into pizzas. I'm also gonna prepare my toppings. Okay, so this is super simple. I'm just gonna use the knife to cut thin very thin strips. You can always use a mandolin. A mandolin is this thing. It's actually much easier than slicing it with a knife. Super thin slices. They also cook down when they're baking. So I've learned that I need to add more potato than I think I'm gonna need. For our pizza margarita, we just have tomato sauce. We're gonna use the cheese for both. I like a nice, thin crust pizza. Bubble pop. Bubble pop, right. So basically what we're doing is you're just gently pulling it apart, spreading it out. This looks really good. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna transfer this to a piece of parchment paper. For a classic cheese pizza, add marinara, then top with a generous sprinkling of Dea mozzarella style cheese. For the potato pizza, evenly top with sliced potato, then add the Dea mozzarella style cheese, followed by lightly massaged kale and a sprinkle of salt. We're going to transfer these two pizzas to the baking vessel. Wow, this looks so good. 
cheese melted perfectly. It looks super, super, oh man, delicious. So let's let them cool a little. Unfortunately, they need to cool. And then I can eat them. Baby Jay is going to sleep now, so I can finally cut it and eat. It is definitely cool. Yes! Ooh, look at that. The cheese is really nice and the melty. It stretches. Let's taste it. Mmm. Mmm. <gasps> Just what I needed tonight. This is divine. So good. I love sourdough so much. I feel bad that I didn't start this sooner. That's my only regret. Oh, let's try this one, shall we? Mmm. It looks amazing. I love just like the white pizza with the pop of color. And remember, even though you can't see the potatoes, there are potatoes under this cheese. So, mmm. Mmm. A lot. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. Definitely give this sourdough pizza recipe a try. These toppings, I'll link to my recipe below. Let me know if you guys want me to make a video about how to do your sourdough starter or even more videos or tips about getting started with sourdough baking. Thanks to Daya for sponsoring this video. I'm a big fan of this new cutting board collection. This new reformulation is definitely where it's at. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will see you next time. Bye.